Matt Collins, the Senior Vice President of Global Marketing at Dun & Bradstreet. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. So, anyway, I, I thank you so much for the introduction. So I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes talking to you about growth and the importance of relationships to growth. I'm actually going to talk about four things. Growth, relationships, data, and platforms. And in the course of the discussion, I'm also going to share insights from Buster Posey, Tinder, Tina Fey, Amy Poehler, and Mickey Mouse, and what they have to say about the opportunities we all have to actually grow as companies. So I'm going to start by sharing a video of New York City that illustrates the growth of the city over the last 165 years. And what I find particularly impressive about this is the actual physical transformation of the city. You can all see it going on here as we move through time. And certainly as you watch this transformation, it's pretty easy to understand and imagine that New York City has gone through a 20-fold increase in population over the last 165 years. But what's not so obvious is what's happening behind this, actually Rick's point about you know, ecosystems. Interestingly, the growth of New York City has actually been far greater in terms of economics, more than a thousandfold in that time period. New York City today has a gross metropolitan product of $1.5 trillion. If it were a country, it would be the 11th biggest in the world. Now, what happens as a result of that growth? I mean, I'm sure everyone here is not surprised to learn that New York is actually the home of more Fortune 500 companies than any city in the world. But the ecosystem around that, the hundreds of thousands of small businesses and medium-sized medium businesses that have grown up in New York are really what make the city great. In addition, the 100-plus world-class museums the almost 50 world-class colleges and universities. The virtuous cycle of growth is what helps create this ecosystem that makes New York such a great city. And the reality is, whether it's a city, or a state, or a country, or a company, growth is the lifeblood of any organization, right? We all need it, it creates tremendous opportunity. That's why, if you see this slide, almost any study you look at, and this is a recent one uh, by Gartner, CEOs, what's their number one imperative? Growth. Recent study of CMOs, 92% say they feel like they have a mandate and a need to drive growth. It is the imperative for business today. So if it's the imperative, what are companies doing to try to achieve growth? Well, many of you, like billions of people around the world, probably watched some of the World Cup 2014. And it was an incredibly amazing event, and quite an economic event as well. In fact, revenues for FIFA went up almost 70%. The TV rights alone were worth almost $2 billion. And FIFA actually realized almost a billion and a half dollars in sponsorship. And the reality is, in the next year, companies in the B2B space will spend nearly $50 billion on sponsorships to pursue growth. Many of you probably had an experience like this one, right? Kind of similar to what my experience was coming out to the conference, right? I have yet to meet anyone, despite the last presentation, who actually enjoys business travel, right? We've all had this kind of experience. But the reality is, companies will spend over $300 billion in the next year on travel in pursuit of growth and opportunity. We've all probably had meetings like this with fun gentlemen like these guys. What I actually like about this picture is they actually brought their own watches. Now, why do I say that? Because in the next year, companies will spend over $430 billion on strategy, operations, IT, HR, and other forms of consulting, all searching for the answer to find growth, right? And then finally, some of you may actually recognize this. This is one of Facebook's most recent data centers. It is a modern marvel of technology. It's actually situated such that in both summer and winter, the prevailing breezes enter the vents appropriately to help cool the facility. 
150,000 square feet. Now, what's interesting is, you know, Google has more than a dozen just like this housing almost a million servers. IBM, Microsoft, all announcing billion dollar investments in massive data centers, the likes of which didn't exist 10 or 15 years ago. Why? Because we collectively as businesses are going to invest almost $4 trillion in IT to achieve a competitive advantage and drive and realize growth, right? So this is where our friend Buster Posey comes in. Um, I think some of you actually went to the Giants-Dodgers game last night, and I think he was four for two, and you know, actually batting 500 for the game and drove in a run. He's, he's a really phenomenal player. If you don't follow baseball, he's the big star of the local team. When you come into the city, you probably saw the stadium where the game was last night. He's only 28 years old. He's won three world titles. He was the Rookie of the Year, he won the Hank Aaron Award, Comeback Player of the Year Award, and MVP, all by the age of 28. He is absolutely one of the 10 best players in professional baseball. And his career batting average is 309. That means almost seven out of 10 times when he comes up to the plate, he doesn't get a hit. Actually, he's in good company. Willie Mays, another big local hero, Hall of Famer, many consider him to be one of the 10 greatest players of all time, had a career batting average of 304. Now, interestingly, one of the most common sayings around this topic is, you can bat 300 in baseball, but it doesn't cut it in business. Well, we actually did research, and we looked at the 300,000 companies in our global database, and we looked at their growth for 2014. And in fact, fewer than 30% of the companies actually grew in 2014, and many fewer actually achieved their growth objectives, right? So we're spending all this money, sponsorships, IT investments, travel, you name it. What's missing? Well, we believe at Dun & Bradstreet, fundamentally, the companies that are growing are focused on relationships, right? The reality is technology comes and goes. Products become obsolete. And quite frankly, the sad part is people leave. But the most enduring competitive advantage that any company can have is the relationships that they build over time with their customers, their suppliers, their vendors, their partners. And they use those relationships to create competitive advantage that can endure and create tremendous economic value. So what makes a great relationship? This is where our friends Tina and Amy come in. This is a shot from the Golden Globes. For those of you who don't follow the Golden Globes, uh, they've been the host for the last two years, and the ratings have gone through the roof. Now, both of these professionals have been incredibly successful in their own right. Uh, you know, 30, uh, 30 Rock for Tina, Amy uh, is the big star of Parks and Recreation. They earn hundreds of thousands of dollars per episode that they shoot. But they've also had an incredibly powerful collaboration and partnership and relationship over the years. They started doing improv two decades ago. They starred together on Saturday Night Live and they continue to collaborate on productions. And the interesting thing is, when they work together, they, they earn millions. When they work on their own, they earn hundreds of thousands. Now that's a high class problem I think we'd all like to have, right? You know. <laughs> My speaking fee for this is not quite up there. Uh, but, but anyway, I, I think what's, what's interesting about this is that they've got a great relationship because they have different skills and interests. One likes to write and produce more, one's more into the, to the actual acting and the, the improv. They know each other, they can anticipate what either, each, can, each is can do, what can do, and they have tremendous trust. They've got a great relationship. And I think that's just, we believe that's the center of any great successful business venture is the strength of the relationships. Now, this here is a plaque that was produced for the World's Fair in 1939. Um, it was produced by Dun & Bradstreet. It sits in the Baker Library at Harvard Business School. It's part of the permanent DMV collection there, uh, which is actually the most uh, visited and researched uh, archive at that library. And What's central to this is a quote. Um, it's a quote from actually Daniel Webster, the famous 
uh, U.S. senator in the early 1800s, and it speaks to man's confidence in man and the power of credit and commerce. And the reason we are featuring this, and I'm looking at it, is we actually went through a big effort at Dun & Bradstreet to understand what we were all about, a brand modernization and refocusing effort. And when we looked at it, we realized that throughout our entire history, we weren't really about data. We were about relationships. And our earliest employees um, started, we were founded right after a financial panic in 1841, so almost 175 years ago, rode out in, into the frontier on horseback. And their role was to meet with traders and help assess their credit worthiness and create connections between merchants and bankers on the East Coast. And it was all about building relationships and man's confidence in man and arming people with the information so that they could actually build the economy that helped make this country so great. Now, certainly the scale and the scope of what we do today has changed, but fundamentally, our mission and our goal is about helping our clients and our partners build the most valuable relationships in business. And it's, it's really you know, quite interesting because when we talk about relationships, this is kind of the classic model. And it's, you know, I was at, saw the party last night, it's still relevant today, right? Um, you know, but traditionally, your relationships were governed by who your sales team had in their Rolodex. And they built relationships over handshakes and cocktails. And again, it's still relevant today. But what's interesting is you look at any study, and this is a recent one by Gartner, it said by 2020, 85% of a customer's relationship with an enterprise is gonna actually happen without interacting with a human, right? So I don't know if it'll be 75, 80, 85, but I think we get the point. So how do you actually build and manage and optimize relationships in an era where increasingly you may not even know who your customer is? The relationship is built on clicks and taps and swipes, and quite frankly, you may not even speak the same language. Well, the answer is data, right? And I don't think anyone at this point would dispute in the new hyper-connected, digitally enabled world, we're producing a torrent of data. In fact, you can't go a day, a minute, without someone talking about big data. Many of the pundits seem to actually revel in the complexity. We actually think it's time for a simpler discussion. How do you use the data and the information that's available? Your data, the data that other people can provide to help find truth and meaning in data to build the most valuable relationships with your partners, with your customers, with your vendors, so that you can create sustainable competitive advantage. Well, to do it, we believe you need a platform. We call it a relationship platform. Now, before I go into what we mean by that, I wanted to give an example that I think will illustrate how great platforms can transform the way we all interact as people. So the image on one side here is the GPS satellite map that um, was talked about earlier this morning, and the amazing invention of the smartphone, a, a, an incredible piece of software and hardware for collaboration and communication. Now, as we heard, GPS, was a creation of the Department of Defense. It was essentially created because we needed to know, as a country, where our nuclear-armed nuclear submarines and mobile launchers were at any given time so that we could actually run our defense establishment. And then, tragically, in 1983, Korean Airlines 007 was shot down over Russian airspace, had accidentally wandered into that space, and Ronald Reagan, essentially pushed and opened up GPS to commercial use. So now today, every minute, every hour, every day, millions of people are accessing this system, generating reams and reams of data. And along comes this wonderful solution and piece of technology called a smartphone. And a great example is the iPhone. You put GPS together, all the data, all the information, with the technology solution, the iPhone, and you can transform the way you run your life. So, as an example, thanks to this great platform, you can transform the way you find a date via Tinder. You can transform the way you find yourself getting to get your date to pick them up. You can 
do a completely different way on how you get a ride home and where you're going to eat when you're at your date. So if you think about the whole new ecosystem of how people drive personal relations, who they interact with, who they date, where they go, this platform, the combination of the data and the technology solution is transforming the way people can manage their personal relationships and the way they run their personal lives. So, where do we come in here at DMB? Well, yesterday you saw an incredible demonstration of a powerful solution that's been developed by Sugar, optimized for every employee, either directly or indirectly, how they interact with customers across the entire customer lifecycle. We believe you take that solution, you combine it with our content and our data and our analytics and insights, and you can create a relationship platform so that you can manage relationships in a modern way. So what do we bring? World's largest commercial database, almost a quarter of a billion records on companies in countries all across the world. 30,000 data sources updated five million times per day. But it's not just company information. We now have the leading source of contact data through our acquisition of net prospects that we can make available to people so that they can not only understand the company they're doing business with, but the individuals that they need to do business with and interact with, that eye to eye. So at the end of the day, we are working and very fortunate to work with 90% of the Fortune 500. We have 30,000 customers across the world. And those that are really getting value are thinking about this holistically and how they tie together their entire function to actually arm and enable the relationship with their customers and their partners across the whole life cycle. So what do we help enable? We bring information and analytics to help you understand your customers and prospects. We combine your data, our data, third-party data, so you can understand who you need to go after, what their interests are, and who, quite frankly, you don't need to focus on. We can provide tools to help you capture the interactions, information on the interactions you're having with these clients as they come to you, whether it's physically or over the web. We can give you insights to help you nurture them more effectively and intelligence for your teams to help close those opportunities. And the same information can be used by your finance function, your supply chain, uh, your compliance department, and of course your credit department to make sure that the people you're doing business with are the people you want to do business with and you understand them so that the entire organization has the information they need to create that effective world-class ecosystem that Rick talked about earlier today. So I've talked about it. It sounds interesting. Is it real? I mentioned we we're working with over 30,000 companies or customers of ours today. We just recently uh, finished a piece of work with Gartner um, that really looked at customer customer data management. We surveyed and studied almost 150 companies to understand how maturity affects of the customer data management affects business results and what the impact is of companies working with us to build a relationship platform. And what this study found is that companies who are actually working with Dun & Bradstreet to build a relationship platform manage their campaigns and convert opportunities 46% more effectively they close deals 29% more effectively, and most importantly, generate 10% more revenue growth. So the results are real. It's not easy, but working with partners like Sugar, it's getting easier every day because we bring the data, the information, the analytics, and the insights together with the solution to help you create your relationship platform. So I'm going to close uh, with our final guest here, Mickey Mouse. But actually, Mickey's not really the star of this story. They're more of a supporting part. It's a story about Starin, um, uh, a great customer and, uh, you know, quite frankly, a, a company that's really transformed who they are and who they serve. Uh, they're in the audiovisual space, um, started as a very small Midwestern company, regionally based, creating AV solutions for churches, schools, convention centers, and they've grown over the last two decades to be a national company with an international supply chain. And they've moved from not only serving schools and churches and convention centers to now actually working with the Disney Corporation. 
And it's amazing what they're doing. They're actually supplying technology that hearing impaired people can wear in their ear while they're in the parks so that the Disney experience can be communicated to them, information can be communicated to them, and they can have the same immersive experience as anyone else. Now, as you, if anyone's been to Disney World, you know how incredibly amazing the, the, the scale and the consistency of the experiences that they deliver. And if you've ever worked with them, you understand they're also an incredibly difficult client. Um, and we're talking about delivering solutions at a volume of thousands of units. So how is Starin doing this? Well, they're building their relationship platform and they're leveraging every day, every single one of their employees, every one, every single one is on sugar. Procurement, finance, marketing, sales, you name it. They're all on that solution. And what's interesting was when, when, when the opportunity for D&B for Sugar came around, they recognized that their credit department was already working with D&B to understand who they should be doing with, how they should be extending terms of business. And they said, wow, this would be incredibly powerful if we could take more and more of this information and share it with our entire workforce. And that's what they've started to do to great success. And what's really interesting is, you know, Jeff Held explained to me, and he's going to be here, by the way, at 1 o'clock. He's going to talk about how they've built this relationship pra uh, platform, working with DataSync, uh, a, a critical partner for, for Sugar, with the Sugar Solution and the DMB data to build their platform. He talks about how they actually think very intelligently about what information they share with which employees so that it's not a deluge. You only get what you need to do your job. And it's an incredible, incredible story. And what they understand is that growth is about relationships and leveraging data and building a platform. That's what we're all about. And again, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to share our point of view on how you can all achieve growth. Thank you. Thank you.